guys, how's it going? So we started off today with just a really peaceful moment. It was peaceful for me anyway, here in the Hartley, watering, grooming, fertilizing. It was on my list to do today and it seemed like a great thing to start with because while it may look beautiful and sunny, which it is, it's making it very warm in here. In fact, the heater hasn't been working at all today so far which is great, but it is blustery and cold out there. We've got winter weather coming our way, snow on the forecast and low temperatures in the teens. So it begins, I need to get out there. In fact, I'm sitting here gearing up right now to go out and plant a whole bunch more bulbs. So, you know, the other day we planted a bunch of tulips and alliums up in the Versailles garden. I had daffodils in the gator and I just ran out of time. So that's what we're gonna start with today. I have seven varieties and then I've got uh, Camassia, have any of you guys planted that? I'm sure a lot of you have, it's a new one to me. It's uh, one that blooms really late. It comes up on a long stalk with uh, like purplish blue bloom panicles and I think 34 to 38 inches tall. So I'm excited to try that one out. All of these are gonna go out in the South Garden, by the way. So we're gonna be out in the like unprotected area, <laughs> just being windblown. Uh, today. If we happen to get into some of our tulip varieties, that would be awesome. I think Erin's actually going to come out here and help me, but I would love to get all of the rest of the bulbs planted by the time those really low temperatures arrive. So real quick before we head out, while we're still in an area where it's nice and warm and cozy, I want to run through the varieties of daffodils. Now a couple of really good things about daffodils, uh, they naturalize really well, much better than most tulip varieties. Uh, when we plant daffodils, we know that they're just going to come back every year and they multiply. Um, so that's what naturalizing means. You know, they stay in the ground and they will kind of keep spreading like a lot of perennials do. They don't do it super duper fast, uh, but they are just really reliable bulbs at coming back. Uh, they're also rodent and deer proof, which is nice. We don't have deer in our garden, but we sure do have rodents. Um, and it's not something that most of us want to be dealing with. So it's nice that some of the bulbs we put in the ground are resistant to that. Now tulips are not, um, especially like for squirrels. I know a lot of you have issues with tulips and squirrels and it's something that I may start having an issue with because I'm noticing this year that we have squirrel activity more than we have had in several years. We used to have squirrels when we had that big bank of oak trees that were that we had removed because they were diseased. Um, we had tons of squirrels at that point, but then they just kind of went away. And now that we've built back up and we have more and more trees on our property, I'm noticing more activities, so that's something we may deal with. Um, in which case, we'll probably put down repels all. We'll probably do um, chicken wire, especially over areas like behind the Hartley, Hartley where we just planted all the tulips like in big blocks. That's really easy to cover with hardware cloth or chicken wire something that they can't dig through, uh, but I'm keeping my eye on them. Nobody has dug in any of those areas yet. Okay, first variety is Banana Splash. It's a beautiful showy daffodil. It grows about 13 to 15 inches tall. It blooms really early in the season, and it's a split corona type, which means, uh, you know, it's got its white back petals, and then its trumpet, instead of going forward, it lays back kind of on top of the back petals. You can still see the back petals, uh, but it's got like this fluffy, relaxed yellow trumpet. It's, they're just absolutely beautiful. Next variety is Avalanche, which this one is really interesting. It comes up about 14 to 16 inches tall. Each stem can have upwards of like 10 plus blooms per stem. They're not quite as huge, you know, as like the great big daffodil standard, I guess, blooms. They're a little smaller, of course, and they are highly scented. So they're ones I'm going to cite away from our house. I don't want them along a main walkway because I don't prefer the smell of, of narcissist daffodils, paper white kind of smell. I don't like that. Um, so they are going to go out into the garden where we can enjoy the way they look, but they're not going to be in an enclosed cozy area where we're walking all of the time. Uh, but this variety is really good for those of you who live in the south where you maybe have a hard time getting bulbs to come back reliably because they do need a cold period. They need a certain, certain amount of weeks of cold in order to be productive but this one doesn't require quite as, quite as much. So um, this one is really good in areas like that. It's gonna be an interesting one though to try though, white with a very soft yellow cup. Next one is a sweet little variety called Minnow. They grow about eight to 10 inches tall and they've got blooms that are only about the size of a quarter, uh, but multiple blooms per stem and they're very cheerful, bright looking blooms, white with a, a kind of brighter yellow cup. I love to have smaller daffodils that we can tuck into the front of borders instead of having to sight them a little bit back. It's just such a fun, different look. Next one is Bella Estrella, or is it Bea Estrella, Bella Estrella, I don't know, either way. Beautiful, beautiful daffodil. I've grown it for the last couple of years. Every year I like to add a few more in because I enjoy this one so much. It's a cross between a split corona and a jonquil. It's like, um, 
It looks like it's trying to be a split Corona in that the cup comes forward still, but it's really fluffy. Uh, it's just got the most unique look to it. They're about 14 to 16 inches tall and they bloom early to mid season. And they are lightly scented, but they're not like that really strong in your face daffodil scent. Like it's a scent that I can actually handle and I don't mind at all. So I plant this one anywhere. Next is Thalia, which is a beautiful, like ethereal feathery looking daffodil. It's got really narrow petals, it's all white. They look absolutely beautiful planted in mass. If you can do it in like a woodland sort of situation. That's why I think they're gonna be great out in the South Garden because that's what we're going for, more of a natural feel out there. Um, we won't have like the formal hedging and all of that that we have around this structure and around our home. Um, but they're just, they're so pretty. And they usually have two to three blooms per stem, grow about 13 to 15 inches tall and bloom mid season. And then there's one called Sailboat, which is another small miniature daffodil, eight to 10 inches tall, several blooms per stem, I think two to three, and it's got kind of a swept backed look, and white with a very creamy yellow center. On color, so all of these bulbs come from Color Blends. Uh, on Color Blends website, I think what drew me to this bulb in particular were some of the pictures they shared. There's one where they've got it planted in mass with uh, grape hyacinths. Oh my goodness, they are so gorgeous together. It's something that I want to do somewhere, but I didn't order any grape hyacinths this year, so maybe that's a next year thing. The last one is a blend of three white daffodils called Starry Night. Uh, different structure, bloom structures, just slightly in different height. Uh, they range from 14 to 18 inches tall, but it's just such a crisp, peaceful looking color palette. I mean, you can put it anywhere in your garden with any other colors, they blend beautifully, and I'm excited to see what they look like, all three varieties together. Okay, I'm actually starting to sweat in here. Isn't that crazy that it's so cold outside, yet it's just so like nice in here? The plants are loving it. Uh, but we need to gear up and go out. You guys, all of these are gonna go about six inches deep. I'm using our three and a half inch auger. We might get the nine inch out so that I can do like six per hole. I think the recommended is like five inches or five bulbs rather per square foot. So maybe I'll just do five per hole. Anyway, we'll throw some Biotone starter fertilizer in all of the holes. I'm out of bulb tone. I'd use that if I had it. Uh, but you guys have seen us do bulb planting, especially if you've watched our last couple of videos, that's what we're focusing on right now. So let's just go out there and get it done.
So far, all the daffodils are in. The camassia, if that's how you pronounce it, is in. I did load up with a few other bulbs, but I won't have time. I've got about an hour, a little less than an hour left. Uh, and so I'll get as many of these in the ground as I can, but I wanted to walk through really quick and show you where I put what variety um, so we can know what to expect in the spring. These are the bulbs I have though. We've got 500 white squill or white scillas uh, right here. These only have to go three inches deep and they're a real small bulb. So I actually brought a shovel out because I think it might be faster just to lift a little bit of soil, line bulbs up and then put the soil back over the top. I've got Iris reticulata called Harmony. These are so pretty, you guys. If you do not have these in your garden, I encourage you next year, if you can't get your hands on them now, next year, get some of these. They're so, so pretty. We've got two different types of allium. There's this Siculum, cream with green and red, and then the uh, Nigrum right there. And they're both just a little bit more oddball looking varieties I've never tried before. And then we've got a crocus blend called Hocus Crocus, which there's a white one, a purple one, and then a white striped with purple. So all of these, except for the alliums, alliums need to go five inches deep, these need to go three. Okay, for our daffodils, I started with the avalanche variety right here. So there are about 50 kind of right around this clump of perennials. And then I started in here and did some throughout this area. And we've also got some Menton tulips in here. I don't think they're gonna be blooming at the same time, but at least we'll have some successive spring color. And the thing about bulb planting, especially in a garden like ours where we're just kind of starting this garden out, where there's a lot of blank areas. And I do plant a lot of bulbs in those blank areas, but you have to kind of expect later on when you get ready to plant those spots that you're going to be digging up some bulbs when you dig holes for perennials and shrubs and trees. And I just expect it. Most of the time they're fine. They just pop out of the hole and I just bury them again. I just dig a new hole and bury them again. Um, but it's nice when you've got perennials already in the ground and you kind of go in between them and then you know that they're never going to be messed with. After I was done with avalanche, I came over to this side and did thalias, which I started right about here and then went in and around the tree and the perennials here and ended, my goodness, I think I ended by the geraniums over here. So you can kind of see where soil's roughed up. And I did groupings of like seven, four, five, ten, um, so that it looks a little bit more haphazard. Uh, but like I went behind the geraniums here, between the geraniums here, and then kind of swung around the back side of the tater tot arb and ended here. Okay, this isn't in order, but this is closest. I planted the Bella Estrellas out here, right in the entryway. I started right about where the hose is, where the Arctic fire dogwood is, and just did big groupings of them all the way to about here. Just starting to develop the, the border out here. It's gonna take a while. I mean, we've got a lot of space. There are a bunch of Menton tulips in here and some Thalias. Thalia daffs around in this area already uh, that we planted last fall, so we're just kind of adding to it. All right, back over here. On this side of the grass pathway, Camassia, 100 of them all the way through this area. Again, they grow about three feet tall, so I wanted to bump them back in the border. So I did a grouping here, did a large grouping in here, and kind of just worked them in. That Wichita Blue Juniper is so gorgeous. I mean, oh, it's just shining right now. Everything in this bed is looking really nice. The Proberry, Coralberry, the Sesky Gold Dwarf Birch, Black Lace Elderberry, everything's just working great together. And that's the Tiramisu Sedum. Anyway, Canassia goes back toward that birch and then it kind of comes back around. I stopped for a minute. Uh, because I want that urn to still be visible and three foot tall plant would be too tall for that. And then I ended with a drift that kind of swings around this totem pole panicum. On the other side of the grass pathway, underneath the Tiger Eyes Sumax, I uh, planted the Starry Night Blend. I've kind of noticed that this whole area in the middle has a very dry kind of yellow look to it. I need to be adding more cool tones. Uh, so I was on purpose, I didn't add a daffodil that had yellow. I think the all white blend is gonna be really nice and it starts right here and kind of just goes underneath the tiger eyes and the tiger eyes you know won't have leaves in the spring so we'll be able to enjoy the daffodils and when those kind of peter out then the tiger eyes will take over uh, i did have five extra globe master alliums and i just put them right here <laughs> you know just pop them in and then all the way on this end my goodness that is an ominous looking cloud isn't it quite chilly right now. So starting right in here and going toward the end, you can kind of see the spots that are roughed up. This is where the banana splash daffs went. And I think because I've worked in a lot of purples and pinks over here, 
it's just cooler looking over here so the daffodil with the yellow will look really pretty i did run into a gopher run right here i kind of pecked some soil into it but gophers don't like daffodils so it's a good spot for them and then the minnow and sailboat daffs ended up on the other side so let's head over there i hope my coffee isn't cold i had to go in and make a cup because i'm kind of frozen right now mm. still hot all right right over here we have the minnow daffs right here and i worked around this hardy geranium and kind of went through i think i made it past the veronica here yep right in front of the sedum so that'll be a big beautiful drift of color there and then on this side i went in with the sailboat variety and i started here just kind of right in front i did scoot the butterfly bush so that i could get some underneath there and then it's pretty thickly planted right along the walkway until right here I think those will look so pretty, just kind of softening the edge. Oh my goodness, I feel like winter just arrived, like in the last hour. Holy moly. I think what we should do is just tackle the alliums and the iris. And then I think I'm gonna call it for the day. So we've got 25 of each one of the allium varieties. And let's see, I've got 200 of the iris. Okay, so the Harmony Iris ended up in a nice drift around the base of this juniper. There are some seducer hostas that come up in the spring, uh, but they're a little bit later, so I think it's going to be gorgeous because the iris bloom fairly early. And then I put the Allium nigrums, which I have 25 of, in this area, kind of around this witch hazel and hosta and back behind the salvia in front of the grass and the boxwood. I think it'll be a nice touch of spring color. Now the other type of Allium, I didn't realize I have a hundred of them. <laughs> I picked up the bag and I thought, oh, that's heavier than the last bag. So I think I'm going to take these out into the south garden so that we can put them fairly close to one another. Okay, those are in. They start right in front of this bloomerang lilac and kind of swing around through the totem pole and then swing back behind the redbud tree. And if I'm adding it up in my head correctly, that's 1,130 bulbs in the ground today. That is a pretty, pretty productive day, I, I think. So the bulbs we have left are the crocus, the scillas, hyacinths, and tulips. Um, and they probably add up to just a little bit more than what we put in the ground today. I think I might be taking the tulips into the cut flower garden. I'm not quite sure yet, um, but those will need to be done probably within the next week or so. So we will probably be doing uh, that project together here shortly. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.